then you guys can stay as late as you like. All right. Um, so, as I said earlier, I'm Amel, and uh, I founded a company called Etapink, so around 2006, and uh, we still here. <laughs> so, um, today's presentation is going to be around uh, hacking life rate. Basically, that was based on the blog that we did for the client. Well, we did some white papers for the client, then we did the blog, and then now there's a presentation for it also. So, security, security against online threats, because lately, there's, uh, if you check the news, you know, Microsoft been hacked, Facebook been hacked, Twitter been hacked. Who's next? Anybody can get hacked now. So, quick over overview of uh, our set of picks, you know, uh, so in 2006, uh, I still write code, but I try to focus more on the architecture around LifeRay and some other applications as well. We did uh, a lot of LifeRay uh, implementation the last two years and including some of the big names such as Nokia, even Backlist, Bank as well, we did some for them. And recently, uh, Joe just finished a, a, a project for a client that we can't see the name. So, um, yeah, LifeRay seems to be a good technology for us. It's bringing us a lot of business. And so we also have a lot of experience in it because there's only five of us in the company, so we have to do everything ourselves, from development to theme to uh, performance management to securing it as well. So uh, the focus of this presentation will be around uh, security from the operating system, the database, and life frame concepts. And this presentation will be around Tomcat and life frame. If it is JBoss. You may want to look into the Jobbox uh, book. <laughs> 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 because this is uh, more around, uh, and the OS here is a Linux as well. So Linux based, uh, you can do a Debian based, which is um, if you guys use Amazon Cloud, mostly Linux anyway. All right, oh, uh, that was a good presentation. I mean, that one there was coming down. You can have admission as well, <laughs> which is not here. Don't worry. I was meant to click a button, then the OS had news come out. <laughs> um, there is security, Tomcat. So, operating system hardening. What we do when we have a, when we do for life, right? first of all, we choose our operating system. In this case, we chose our Linux. And Linux is most of the most deployed version. Uh, Debian is often the most deployed one on uh, Amazon. Most people on Amazon use, use Debian. And what people for, uh, are forgetting is how to communicate with the operating system. If you want to transfer files to Linux and use FTP, then you will get hacked. Because FTP is no secret at all. And if you try to tell me that I'm logging or anything, around that for communication, which is not secure. If you're not using SSH or uh, any other more secure uh, way to communicate with your server, then it's possible that someone will be listening to the communication and have to eventually. That's what that happened in production, by the way. Can we ask questions as well? <laughs> uh, all right, so I will uh, oh, this yeah. presentation. Yeah. And we could do it at the end. So. Anybody that wants to find some questions, we just write it down and then we do it and I pick the one that will answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one of the, another thing about uh, Linux is that a lot of people is just install Linux and do not actually customize it. Right? So you could log into your box using root and everybody using Linux. Root is like this super user, you know, it has all the powers. So, you know, I don't know. Nobody can beat this guy, right? It's like the super Marvel villains, right? So if you start using root and, and using you know, FTP to connect as well, turn it, and everybody see your root login, then you just give the door, the, the keys to your, to your house, basically. So make sure that you never use root, even if you just have Linux on your laptop. You shouldn't have root enabled for logging in. You should have another user that you have, that you use all the time, and you use what uh, is called sudo. Sudo actually stands for uh, super, do as super user. All right, so with our sudo, you could, if you log in as yourself, you usually run the sudo, we let you run command like uh, the root. And that will also secure the root login so that you don't have to you know, uh, expose that as well. One of the main things as well is a firewall. If you install an OS, you need to have a firewall to block most of the other ports. A lot of people don't. They just install it, uh, life is working, Tomcat is working, 
let's go into it, let's write a potlet. Now, you're supposed to a lot of uh, pots open, either the Turner pot, the FTP pot, or any other pot that's open. And anybody can use those, any vulnerabilities around those pots, to log into the OS. Once you log into the OS, forget it. You could circle all you want, you could circle Tomcat, you could circle uh, your database, it's gone. Because the person has actual access to the OS. So that's the most important thing to actually secure in any deployment uh, architecture. So, uh, securing the Linux kernel is very important because that particular file there in Linux, when, when the system starts, it sends comments to what should be loaded. So, this file, if it's not secure, you, you could add any other comment into it. You could, uh, you could then write viruses. I haven't seen any viruses on Linux yet, but I'm sure there's some out there. They could write viruses and you ask the file to put into the bootloader. And once it's in the bootloader, again, you lost control of the OS. And that's one thing that you don't want. You don't want to lose control of the OS. You could lose control of your Tomcat, anything else, but not the OS. And the next thing, which is when you install a software, you know, if you install an OS, if you see services that you don't use, that you don't need, remove them. All right? A lot of those OS uh, could have uh, some bugs, and the bugs could be used by uh, an attacker to log into the application or to understand viruses or anything. So if you don't need the software, just remove it. All right. Uh, I hope that that wasn't too fast. All right. If I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. Okay. All right. The next part of security is our uh, database security. All the data in library, unless you run into a development environment where you use the <coughs> in our library database, there will be in some external databases. Now, here I'm focusing more onto the MySQL database because it seems to be very popular. Some people run Oracle, but this, uh, this presentation is based on MySQL. One thing about MySQL, when you install it, MySQL always asks you to change the, the root password. Right? So, well, don't disable it, but change the password anyway. Make sure there's some secret password that, that you have in place. And uh, it comes up with a lot of accounts that you don't really need. If you install a database and you don't use it for production, make sure all the accounts on it are the ones that you actually created yourself, not the one that came into the server. So remove any other accounts that you want to need. And don't, don't again, just like the OS, the, the root user, uh, for the database, actually different to the root user on the OS. But the root user for the database should not be able to log in from an external server. Or you just open up your server again. And that's something that you don't want to do. And any change that you make, make sure that, okay, the change are applied into the database. One important thing is that MySQL uh, supports SSL connection. If you're really worried about security, make sure that you communicate using our SSL. And all those actually is things that we are uh, applied in production systems. I was trying to fit the presentation in 10 minutes, so there's a lot of things that I removed as well. And I'm trying to summarize pretty quick. All right, so the sequel part is a corner shot. Now we have the Tomcat. <coughs> all right, one of the things that we have in Tomcat that we tested is that uh, Tomcat, when you, when you download the Tomcat from our Lifer website, it's just an, uh, the default Tomcat installation. You run it. That flow works fine. You see all the user interfaces and stuff. But Tomcat has uh, some, some port that you can just send comment to, and Tomcat will actually shut down. Right? So when you go into production, make sure that that port is actually switched off. I think to switch off is uh, put it to minus one. Then uh, it won't take any more connection. And that's Tomcat in general, not just to life. If you have any web application running on Tomcat, Make sure that's actually switched off. Tomcat also listen to every single IP address you have on the server. All right. So any IP address on the server, if someone uses it, they could connect into Tomcat. Some servers have about five or six or seven uh, network cards. You don't want attackers to start using those networks, numbers, you no know, IP addresses, and connecting to your Tomcat. So make sure that you say, okay, you tell Tomcat just to listen to a certain IP address that you wanted to listen to. And anything else, maybe you should disable it from some other ways. Uh, again, there you have our root access for Tomcat, which I think most of the time now it comes disabled. But if it doesn't, make sure that it's not uh, live as well. 
Tomcat uses different, for SSL connection, they use different ciphers. So why don't you go for this uh, server.xml in Tomcat, which is just an XML file with some values. Make sure that you look at all the ciphers and for SSL, try to enable them. You know, that will increase the security. And for library, if you want library to be safer, then uh, serve everything for HTTPS, which is not always ideal because HTTPS is slower than HTTP. So when, when it comes to performance, maybe Joe could give us a uh, presentation around performance, but HTTPS is actually a lot uh, slower because of the security that is on top of it. And that's one of the things. And uh, library, you could set it up to use the room, and then everything else is set for HTTP. So life security is mostly around the, how the portlet communicates. There's extra portlets in life there's there's uh, servlets. Some of them that you don't even use sometimes, they're still on. So any portlets that you don't really need in life you should disable them. You should not delete them from the life installation because then later on if you're trying to do some more upgrades, you will have some problem. So don't delete them, just disable them from uh, having the portlet uh, properties file. Yeah. Right? You could disable them from there and you leave them there for upgrade, it will be a lot easier. Uh, you could tell Life as well to uh, uh, set the preferred protocol to HTTPS, which is one of the values as well. And uh, you have the JSON on the Life tunnel that's already there, which I think is used for the web services. Yes. If you don't use the web services for external applications, maybe you still should them off. <laughs> but if you do, make sure that they use the HTTPS as well for connection. Because if they don't, then again, you have the, you're exposing your uh, ser ser services, work services. Uh, next thing, you have the, uh, the Spring Remoting and the Web Dive servlets, which everybody knows the Web Dive one. Uh, the, the Spring Remoting, I haven't actually used it personally, but if it's going to be any server base, to summarize this, anything that's server base that's listening to an IP address needs to use HTTPS if you're worried about security. If there's any, user authentication going through it, or any data that shouldn't be uh, seen by anybody else, maybe very important documents that need to be signed across uh, different systems, then you should try to hide it using HTTPS. And obviously with LifeRay, make sure you use a strong password, which I uh, think LifeRay 6 will come to about six or seven algorithms, new ones. So make sure you use a very good one in the configuration. So 52. So, Sorry, I try to rush this. Uh, so, in conclusion, when you deploy LifeRay into a production environment, it's different to when you de uh, you're developing against LifeRay. You need to make sure that the OS is secure first, because if an att attacker has access to the OS, then you could just delete anything on the server and probably have access to other things on the networks. So, once that is secured, you want to make sure that the Tomcat that LifeRay is running on, on the database are also secured. Uh, there's other ways as, as well, which are not here, as I said at the beginning. I was trying to rush out this presentation. But you could also do some uh, uh, file, you know, file permission settings as well. So some directories can be, be, can be read or uh, wrote to from some users. And Tomcat, one of the important things that I forgot to put in this, is that Tomcat should run under a different user, maybe a Tomcat user. And that Tomcat user has very limited uh, access to the OS. So if someone had to talk to they don't use that some user to try to hack into the overall system as well. So that's very important as well. And library, at the end of the day, just no web application. There's a, a lot of uh, issues that we find with library using the OS uh, is also about our top 10 vulnerabilities. And there's a lot of things that library actually exposes that we find. But there's, you could fix them. Some of them you may have to change the actual how library generates the headers when you make a request to it. <coughs> Depending on which version of life you're using, the license may restrict it to do some stuff unless you want to share it. So that's it, that's the presentation there. Well, quick, quick question. Uh, third party authentication service. Uh, and, uh, that's, that's part of the default life rate in GH. Uh, is it something that's new? Uh, actually, uh, on the blog, we mentioned the LDAP as well, yeah. and we mentioned some SSOs as well. So if you want to use uh, other CAS or anything else, you need to make sure that uh, which other system you're using are secret as well. And uh, LDAP, 
you have to look at the security of the other and other piece of protocol. So you have to make sure the way you connect to your active directory, that's the active directory system that it uses, yeah. uh, make sure that the user that you use to go to active directory, because you have to do a lookup to active directory. So that user needs to be restricted in what it can do. Is it, is it part of the um, lightweight configuration, or is it just as you use it as a... No, you add it as an extra, because life, it comes with LifeRate. LifeRate gives the option to connect from LDAP, yeah. Facebook, uh, and anybody else. Oh yeah, you scored all off, all off thing and whatever. Yeah, the social off to it. Yeah. Okay. So LifeRate does that, it gives the option to, for all those systems, and you just have to make sure that whichever you implement is actually safe. So if the FTP is, is, is disabled, what's the recommended way of uploading <coughs> files to the server? Use our SSH, SSH. Uh, secret socket, uh, what does the H stand for? SSH or SSL? Uh, SSH. 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 Which is so a shell. shell. Yeah. Okay. Is it shell? Yeah. All right, so it's a second shell then. SSH works on SSL. Yeah, wow, well, <laughs> the whole works on SSL. The work on there as well. So if we use that then, because FTP, a lot of time, uh, when we st first started working with our life rate, and sometimes we were seeing, uh, I think some guys had access to our server and they started downloading a lot of films on it. And we were using that for another torrent site. <laughs> so the server was going slow. So, and it was always through FTP that we were doing that. And we should have known better that we don't use FTP for that. If you want to move files across, use SSH and SCP to send the files across. And there's a lot of tools there on the internet that are free. I think WinSCP is one of them. And Putty is another one yeah. that you can use. Yeah. So, so make sure you just have the certificates, you uh, create certificates so you can connect to it and you always check the certificates. Yeah? Not, not really a question, but uh, a couple of my clients had a problem with that. There are bar there's a virus out there that collects FTP passwords from Dreamweaver and Farzilla. They're still dead and clear, which are obviously two of the common FTP clients out mm -hmm. there. And it's just really reinforcing what you said. Yeah. But, but, oh. but, but, so, yeah. I mean, one of the things that's like two of my clients had Two of my clients. That's mm -hmm. well, two is too, too many. Uh, <laughs> one of the things is that if, you, if you're going to be using something like a Dream River for building the website, make sure that the FTP server that you have could only write to a certain directory. And coming to LifeRay, LifeRay is more about building WAR files and so you just build the WAR files, you deploy them. I think it's one thing that I mentioned there is that you have to display, uh, disable the auto deploy. Right? Because then again, anybody could just deploy something we slow down the server as well. So it's not good for performance in production. But FTP user that you have should be restricted to what it can do. Just a single folder, and you have a Chrome job there, so every time the Chrome will just monitor what's in there, and just put the files in a more secret area. I would just say that it's also good to choose your tools, because uh, you know there are a lot of uh, SSH clients, but some of them might be actually keyloggers. So, uh, yeah. Just wow, like, yes, yeah. that's true. I mean, uh, <coughs> go with the more popular one. But yeah, yeah no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, you know, if we use Linux, if li we use Linux for development. So Linux already built in with our, what is our SSH and yeah. so we just transfer straight away. But a lot of people like to use Windows and Macs and, and <laughs> <more>. <laughs> <laughs> So those guys who could just have some GUI where just drag and drop. They open up a lot of security holes as well.